In this video, we'll look at blocking in a pose using the animation in the scene from the last video on framing and staging. Where I've gone to so far is I've got my two cameras in. Camera two, then, is a close-up, or actually a medium shot of the ego talking. We'll pan to the right, going to over the shoulder, as the one who's highlighted now in purple points to look out the window at something out there. This is a great way to show off maybe an improvement versus simply touring through somewhere. Let's say they're pointing out a solar farm or something similar. We want to start out by blocking in poses. Before we worry about the motion, we want to worry about the strength of the pose. Where is the character leading our eye to? Or is there something specific in their body language we should be looking to? And is there the right strength in that? Is it definite that they are aiming somewhere. What I'll start with then to animate this is, given my camera, where should he be looking? I'm going to say his motion starts from 72, so I'll add those frames down here in my playback range, 72 to 144. At 72, his arm should be down. I'll get him posed first, and then we'll raise it up and look to his left. To make it easier to animate, I'll go to Shading, and x-ray joints, so I can see their skeletons. Right now it's an all FK skeleton. I'll simply pick the bones and move or rotate them as needed, and they'll take their children with them. If you have a more complex rig with IKs, you can use that, and controllers, and so forth. I'm going to keep it simple for this round. The other thing I'll do is use one of my masks. I'll press and hold spacebar for the hotbox, and in the space to the left of Maya, I'll choose the animation mask. Now, I can't grab his mesh. I can only select bone objects. As I select across things, the only thing I can grab are bones. This is good because it will prevent me from accidentally moving a model. As an alternate, I could put all the other things on display layers and make them templates or references. I'll start out by getting his arm in the down pose where I want it. One of the advantages to set key animation is that it lets you get the pose right before you decide on setting a key. I'll take his arm, and I'm going to press and hold E and left-click anywhere and make sure I'm on the local rotation in the marking menu for rotation. Now I'll rotate the arm down and maybe bring it forward just a little bit. I'll make sure I check in a perspective view that I'm not folding his arm into his body too badly. I'll also pick his forearm and bring it up just a bit. If you notice, I have my discrete rotate on. This is the time to turn it off. I'll press and hold E, and left click and hold anywhere, and I'll turn off discrete rotate, so his motion doesn't snap every 15 degrees as I have it set. That's pretty good. He's going to start out with his arm down at his side. The other arm will pull down as well. I'm going to take these bones, and I'll key just the first one, the arm joint, by pressing Shift E. I'll also key the motion, Shift W. I'll do the same down here with this arm. I'll make sure I'm at the right frame. I realize I goofed and left a key around seven, at 96. I'll come back to 72 and I'll pull this arm down as well and set its key. Okay. So initially in his motion, this arm will raise up and he'll turn his head to follow. Here's how we move that key around. I'll select the key and right click and choose cut, go to frame 72, right click and choose paste, and I will paste that key in. His arm starts out there, and by probably fairly quick, maybe 104, 105, his arm is up, so I'll raise it and hit shift E to key it. Quick test, arm down, arm up, good. Then I'll worry about his head. I'll say that he raises his arm and then starts to look. So maybe just a few frames after the arm will key his head, working on the neck first and keying the rotation. And over here a little later, by 115, 116, he's turned his head to look where his arm is pointing. Arm comes up, looks over, pointing out. Final motion would be the fingers. I'm going to hold on for a sec for the fingers and I'm going to talk about the step tangents. 
I need to make sure before I worry about the motion that the tangents are stepped so I look at the poses. Is it a strong pose? Then come back and worry about the motion between. I'll right click on the key and choose tangents and set them to stepped. To change the tangents on the keys, I'll select them and manipulate them in the dope sheet. I'll select the upper arm and also the neck and finally the other upper arm. I'll choose Window, Animation Editors, Dope Sheet. The Dope Sheet lets you deal with many keys on many objects easily. Not necessarily worrying about the tangent's place exactly, but what kind of tangent it is and where the keys sit on a range of frames. What I'll do to start out is to select these keys and under Tangents, change them to Stepped. With all the keys set to Step, I'll look in the camera. Panels, Perspective, Camera 2. And starting here at 72 is the pose strong. What I may want to do is go to shading and x-ray joints and turn that off. And I'll also turn off my wireframe on shaded and say how does it look. We start at 72. He's talking. He's got his hands out for emphasis. We start to pan over. His arm comes up. Is it guiding our eye off the frame? Yes. And finally his head looks over as we're orbiting. That works really nicely. With the tangent set to step, I can look at the pose and say, is that guiding the viewer to the next part of the story correctly? Now we can come back in the next lesson and smooth out that motion for weight and snap.